Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. Whether there's an SHTF event today, tomorrow, next week, next year, or never, and you live through your entire life without anything tragic ever happening to you, and all you have to face at the end of life is failing health, one of the most important things that you can do for your survivability and your quality of life is staying fit. And that's what this video is going to be about. I want to share with you exactly what I do for my fitness routine. Now, obviously, I'm not like some kind of like a muscle man like that looks like I, I, I spend like eight hours at the gym every day. You know, I don't do that, but fitness has always been really important to me. It's one of the reasons that I, I uh, eat a mostly vegetarian diet uh, is because your general health is just such an important asset for whatever you're doing, whether you're fighting zombies in the apocalypse or, you know, fighting uh, you know, failing health or you know, joint problems or whatever as you're getting, getting older, keeping your health and fitness up is really, really super important. Now, a lot of people in the prepping community will talk about the importance of health and fitness, and uh, you know, I take them at their word for that, that they, you know, it's important to them, and they'll oftentimes even share, like, well, I do this exercise, I do that exercise, and that's great, and it's great to have that encouragement, but I think sometimes for some people, especially if you don't have uh, much or any experience with something, like if you've never gardened before, if you've never fired a firearm before, if you've never worked out before, sometimes it's just helpful to see exactly what someone else is doing. You can kind of emulate what they're doing, and then you can kind of adapt it to your own uh, your own life, your own needs. So that's what I want to do in this video. I've used different types of exercise routines during my life. At the moment, I have what I think is probably the best one that I've ever had and I guess that makes sense because if I didn't I would go back to the earlier one that I thought was better um, so this is working out really well for me uh, there's a couple different things that I do and I want to share them all with you in this video and I'm going to go through everything so if you want to kind of uh, exercise along in this video. You can pause it right here, get, get uh, like, a, you know, some shorts on, get a, like a, a short sleeve shirt on, get ready to kind of work out with me. And I'm going to go through what I do. It takes about 30 to 40 minutes usually is the uh, amount of time that I put in every day for like dedicated, this is my, my fitness time. You know, I do other things that are active during the day. But in terms of this type of thing that you're going to see, it's usually about 30 or 40 minutes. The one thing I want to mention that's outside of this routine that I do a lot of times, I do a lot of hiking. Obviously, I, you know, if you've watched my series, uh, my, my channel for a while, you know that I do a lot of construction and building. In fact, the house I'm in right now, uh, I built myself. So I do a lot of other active stuff outside of that. But one thing I, I like doing a lot of is hiking. And one thing, if you ever go hiking, I would recommend to you is, and I have mine right here, take your bug out bag with you. This is my, uh, well, this is actually my EDC carry bag. This weighs, I don't know, somewhere around 20 or 30 pounds, something along those lines. And whenever I go on a hike, I always just take this with me. Uh, you know, it has the benefit of having all sorts of helpful items in it. I've got granola bars, water, you know, uh, medical stuff. I even got solar panels, a uh, you know, wild edible plant book. It has all that kind of stuff. But the real reason that I usually take it with me is to uh, just get my body used to the idea of walking around with some weight on my pack, uh, uh, I'm sorry, some weight of a pack on my back. And the reason for that is if I ever needed to do extensive hiking and I need to carry a lot with me, I don't want this to be something new and foreign. So it keeps my body stronger being used to having this extra weight. So if you do hiking and you have some kind of like an, uh, uh, a bug out bag or something like that with some weight, even just get a backpack and put some weights in it, it can be a great asset for your body to have that be something that it's just accustomed to doing. All right, so let's go through what I do is my exercise routine. I bought a video game for uh, my boy uh, a couple of years ago that I thought would be fun for him as a way of being active. He used it for a while, he kind of lost interest, but as I was demoing the game for him, boy did I really get hooked on it. It's uh, a Nintendo Switch game called Ring Fit Adventure. Um, it's not really... In important whether you own it or not. I'm just saying this is something that I found kind of inspiring. If you like video games, it's kind of fun. And what it does really in an interesting way is that it gets you exercising by trying to avoid exercising. So you'll be like battling these creatures in the game and you're trying to do it in the simplest way possible that's the least amount of exercise. So it kind of works with your natural instincts to be lazy, uh, but it does it in a way that gets you actually exercising. So I'm going to be using uh, some features of that game uh, during this, but it's not really ne necessary important that you do that you know you, know, you could follow along with this video but, but I want to mention that I'm gonna be cutting to some video of it uh, to kind of just show you, you know, one kind of cool way if you like video games especially if you already own a Nintendo switch that this is something that you could use um, in the game they use a couple of tools uh, they use this kind of ring here 
and this is just a squeezing compression ring. Uh, it kind of it's a motion sensor and things like that. Uh, it doesn't feel like much, but after you've been doing it for a while, you can really feel it through your arms. If you don't uh, have the game and you want to just kind of get your own. Uh, you can get for like, you know, just like 10 bucks or something like that. These kind of rings, um, these are called like Pilates rings and uh, they make them in two different uh, types of styles. This is for arms. It's a little bit easier. They make other ones that are much more tense and have different um, uh, kind of pads on the sides for your legs. They kind of go between your thighs. Uh, if you're going to get one of these and you want to kind of emulate the routine that I'm doing, get one of the ones for your arms with these grippy pads on the sides, not the ones with like the stirrups for your legs because it'll really, um, it'd be really hard to use you know, one of those you know, for your arms if it's made for your legs because they're going to be more rigid. Uh, the other thing in the game that they use is just this little motion sensor. I'm going to strap it onto my leg right now. This just kind of senses where you're uh, your body is in space as you're playing the game. But again, if you're just going to follow along with me, you don't need any of this stuff. Just you can go on Amazon. In fact, I'll put a link down in the description below to this item here. Get one of these and you're going to be all set. And the rest of it is all just, you know, using your body's natural weight as a resistance. And, and you just use this a little bit here and there. All right, so let's jump into the game. So this is bringing me to a uh, exercise setup that I had created a while ago. Uh, and this is customized for me. I feel like it's a good kind of uh, warm-up and a, a general exercise. It starts with uh, leg raises, then uh, does a front press uh, with your arms. It goes to planking, then a shoulder press for your biceps. Does squats, my personal least favorite exercise, but a very important one. Uh, a thigh press, a back press. Uh, it does what's called a boat pose, which is kind of like a yoga pose where you're kind of doing crunches. Uh, there's a bow pull, which is sort of like uh, pulling a bow and arrow, and then there's a little yoga thing called tree pose. Uh, so we're going to run through uh, this whole thing right here. It starts out with some dynamic stretching, uh, but I usually skip that because I think that the exercise themselves, for me, is, is, is you know, it's, it's not super high impact, so it's, it's plenty of stretching for me. There's this little robot character, he's sitting in front of you, and it's waiting for me to sit on the floor. So I'm going to sit down on the floor. And for the, uh, the leg stretch, it's waiting for me to be nice and flat. It's waiting for my legs to be flat like this. I've got my back kind of propped up like this. And this is the first exercise. It's just about lifting your legs. So I'm going to lift my legs and hold it. And you can see on the screen, it tells you how long to hold. It's about four seconds long. And then I'm going to put them down, but I'm not going to touch the floor. Just have them float over the floor. And then bring them back up for four seconds. And then down and not touch the floor. Just and then come back. And you can kind of count down. I do 20 of them. This is 18, and it's going down. And here's 17, 17, 17, 17, and then down. And 16, 16, 16, 16. This is kind of a way of keeping track if you're not using a video or anything, is just saying that whatever number you're on four times, that can kind of help you with your, your pacing. And uh, what this exercise is really helping me with is all of these lower abdominal muscles, and in particular, uh, the ones kind of right around my groin. And the reason that I mentioned that is because uh, several years ago, before I was doing this exercise routine, I, uh, I had an issue where I developed a hernia, which is like a, a torn area in your muscles on your abdomen. This is an inguinal hernia. And what it essentially means is you have a, a hole, a space between your... Uh, your muscles where kind of like the bag that holds all your internal organs in has a rupture. My rupture is about one centimeter uh, and it's enough to, you know, not to gross you out, but it's enough to have like, like a little bit of intestine come through. Uh, so I, I've been uh, doing a belt that kind of holds that stuff in. But uh, one thing that I've found really super useful is doing this and a couple other exercises. It really tightens up those muscles and makes it so that, you know, uh, the muscles themselves are kind of, uh, plugging up the, the holes, so to speak. And um, I have, on a couple of occasions, felt like I was starting to get that area to heal up, which you're not supposed to be able to do on your own. It's supposed to be just like, if that happens to you, you gotta get surgery. And it has started to heal up on me a couple of times. Now, I stay active, I do other things, I'm doing construction, I'm doing other things that I probably shouldn't be doing. I'm done with that one. Uh, I'm doing other things that I probably shouldn't be doing. And because of that, I am occasionally re-ripping the thing open. And, you know, I may end up having to do the surgery at some point someday. Um, but uh, I feel like had I been doing exercises like what I'm demoing for you now, in the past, before I tore that, uh, that hole in like, my muscle bag there, 
if I had been doing these exercises, I think I may not have ever torn it to begin with. So even if you don't have a hernia of any sort, doing these kind of basic things can prevent you from getting there. Now we're going to do what's called a front press. This is uh, for making my gigantic chest here. <laughs> so we're just taking this and squeezing it together like that and releasing and squeezing it together. Like this, and you can kind of see the posture of my arms here. And same kind of thing, 18, 18, 18, 18. And I'm not trying to kill myself with this. I'm not trying to like get my knuckles to touch together or anything like that. Just giving general resistance and you can kind of, you know, where you can kind of feel it in your arms. I'm on 15 here. And that's one of the things I, I really like about this exercise routine is in the past, I would try to do fewer reps. I would try to do like eight repetitions of something. Uh, and it like, I'd be like barely squeezing out that eighth one. And I felt like that really strained my body to a large degree. And I never felt like I was really, uh, you know, building a lot of the extra muscle that was going to help me be, you know, more fit and kind of protected from injury later on. Doing the higher number of reps uh, with like a little bit less strain in there, um, I feel like it has, uh, I feel like it's really worked out really well for me. It's kind of more like simulating actual work. Like if I'm doing construction, I'm trying to like pull a couple of boards together. That's what I'm kind of simulating here. What I like about this routine is that it really does kind of simulate uh, what you are going to be doing, you know, on a daily basis with real actual work. You know, I mean, there's only so many times where like you'll be lying on your back and then like a giant log will fall on your chest and you've got to like bench press that log off your chest for whatever reason. I, I know, I'm sure that comes up occasionally, but normally you're doing other kinds of motions in this routine, in this program, really try to stress that. Now, I would mention that uh, I feel like this program was probably set up more for women, I'm sorry, women than for men. There are a couple of things related to balance in particular, uh, where they're asking you to do things that like, dudes can't really do, but women can do them, where, uh, like, where you have lower, uh, more lower body weight. Um, so you'll see that especially when we get to the boat pose. Um, but that said, uh, I still think it's really effective for, for men and women. The plank here, which I'm about to do, uh, is another exercise that really kind of gets this area that helps with my, my inguinal hernia issues. And again, even if you don't have one, strengthening up these areas you know, they're not the, you know, amazing sexy body uh, parts like, you know, trying to get your biceps or your pecs or whatever, but strengthening these areas is really important. So doing a plank, I'm putting both arms like this, kind of put my hands together a little bit, feet go back, I've got a straight line here. I got the sound turned down so I can't tell when it's, uh, when I'm correct. <laughs> Am I good to go? Yeah, I'm good to go. Okay, so I'm starting with 20 and I'm going to go up like this. So 20. 20, 20, 20, and then down, back to straight. And I'm trying to make kind of like a tent, like a triangle shape with my body, and then down. And that's 19, I think, and then 18, 18, 18, 18. I think this is a really effective overall body exercise. It really just gets a lot of different parts of your body. And uh, I find this is one of uh, you know, my favorite kind of all around exercise just kind of gets my whole body warmed up and it's also kind of a stretch you'll notice when i go back down i'm uh not like slamming the ground with my crotch <laughs> um, i'm trying to just make that straight line again and then hold it for a moment and then back up the one thing about this exercise is if i do lose count of how many i have um, sometimes i'm just wondering like man what am i going to get to 20 it feels like i've done 20 already you guys can see on the screen how many I have left, but I, I lost track. I don't know. I'm guessing I'm about 10. How close am I? I'll, I'll pretend I'm at 10. So it's 10. And I'll call this 9 left. And then 8 left, maybe. And then 7 left. Do I look really foolish? Am I way off? All right. You can call this 6 left. Sometimes I'll bring my toes in a little closer to kind of make more of a stretch. Is that five? I lost track again. Another thing that I like to do is my heels. I try to push my heels down towards the ground. And that creates a lot more stretch in my calves and the tendons back there. And that's a good, that's a good thing to have is to have that flexibility. Oh, I think I'm done. Oh, yeah. It's a good thing to build that flexibility into your body because that prevents injuries. And that's the real thing when we're talking 
about either old age or we're talking about like you know an emergency event you don't want to develop injuries because you get, you get an injury in some part of your body and you know depending on your age and your situation you know you could be out for the rest of the day or a couple of days or a couple of weeks you want to avoid injuries the best way to avoid injuries is strengthen your muscles and increase your flexibility shoulder press here you, know, you, you would take this guy kind of rest it on your uh, whatever that muscle is at the top of your arm uh, sometimes it wiggles around a little bit and just kind of squeeze down and not like trying to make them meet or anything like that but uh, just bring them down like that you can see there's still still a healthy gap in there but I really I really like this one I feel that this one not only I mean obviously it's getting your bicep but also I feel like it kind of helps my general posture this one especially if I like focus on my posture while I'm doing it and this one, I forget how many I'm, I do all together with this, but you go on one side and then you'll flip to the other side. Now I mentioned that this exercise routine uh, takes me uh, somewhere around 30 or 40 minutes or so. And uh, what I usually do is I will do what you're going to see here, uh, this kind of routine that I set up on my own, and then I'll play the game a little bit. Like I feel, I feel like this is kind of like my warm up where I do this stuff, and then I'll play the game where I'm like attacking monsters using my exercises and everything. But I, I set this one up because there were certain exercises, like I said, like the plank and like the, uh, the leg lift and well, all these things where I, I want to make sure I at least hit them all once in a day. And if I'm doing like the adventure game, like say, I may not get around to it, I may kill something early. Oh, we're done. I squeezed out an extra one there. So that, that is my, my normal routine is that I will, uh, I will do this as kind of a warm up. Uh, but equally so, what you could do if you're watching this video is that you could uh, do this uh, the same routine twice. Just go through it twice. Uh, we got 10 left of these. And what I like is that as I'm doing this, I can feel my body really starting to warm up and like my arms, like the muscles in my arms, I can feel the, the blood flowing through them, but not, not in like a gross way, but it's just like they feel kind of warm and they feel like, you know, they're ready to do some more work. And I, and I like that feeling. I usually will try to do this at the beginning of the day before I go out and I start doing my work. Um, that helps me, you know, with this issue down here. It helps me uh, with, uh, you know, general injuries and things like that, that I'm going to be reducing that kind of stuff. And the other thing that I feel like it helps me with, and this is a, a me specific issue, although I'm not the only one that suffers from it, is sometimes I'll get headaches. And I, and I think they're like kind of tension headaches in my neck. Like I, I carry my tension weird. When I do this exercise routine at the beginning of the day, I am far, far, far less likely to develop those kinds of uh, headache issues uh, you know, later, later on throughout the day. So for, for that re uh, reason alone, I think uh, this is always really a, a great beginning to my day. Now I'm going to do some squats, my least favorite, but an important exercise. Um, this uh, game suggests I need to hold that, but I found out you don't actually have to hold it. Well, when I'm doing my squats, I try to go from my knees to my butt, make that a uh, horizontal line, kind of like this. And when I get back up, I try not to launch with my arms. I try to keep my arms out here so I'm not helping my legs. Now, um, like I mentioned, I, uh, I'm a big fan of hiking. Uh, I, hear, I live here on the East Coast, up in New England. And uh, the biggest mountain we've got around here uh, is Mount Washington. Now if you live out in the Rockies, Mount Washington is not much of a mountain, but around here it's the, the tallest point on the East Coast. It's about a 4,000 foot ascent from the ground around it up to the peak. The peak is at 6,000 feet and the surrounding ground is at about 2,000 feet. And I've done it probably a half a dozen times in my life. I've always enjoyed it. It's a really varied hike all the way uh, from the bottom to the top. There's all sorts of different environments you go on through from forests to little al alpine gardens and boulder fields. There's a lot of different stuff there. And uh, I, I recently did it over this summer and because I've been doing this and other exercises, even though I'm far older than I've been on any of the other trips where I've gone up it, uh, it was the easiest time that I'd ever gone up it before. So doing things like this, even though it's, it's a little dull and you know, it's kind of strenuous, like just standing here in this position, but it really does make a difference when you're out there and you're doing actual, you know, real activities. Doing, uh, doing the squats, I do start getting just a little bit out of breath. What I like during the game is that so this one, I'm holding them the entire time. During the game, uh, they'll uh, make it so you do this for a few uh, repetitions and then you'll, uh, well, like maybe like 15 repetitions or so. And you can change the game de depending on your 
level of fitness where you can have less or more repetitions. Uh, but after you do a few, you start doing these faster ones. And I always, that always makes me feel energized. Okay. Uh, after that, I know from my memory, I do some uh, th uh, thigh press exercises where I just take the ring, I put it between my legs, and uh, squeeze together. Um, I don't find this to be, oh, here we go. I don't find this to be, for me personally, the uh, most exhilarating exercise. The reason I added it to this routine specifically was because, like I mentioned, I had that inguinal hernia and I felt like this would be a good exercise to kind of target some of those smaller muscle groups in there. But, you know, uh, it's a good exercise either way, so I, I keep it in there and I, I'm demoing the thing for you. But uh, just so you know, I, I specifically put this in there because uh, I felt like it would help me with my particular situation. And like I said, even if you don't have an inguinal hernia, I feel like doing these kind of exercises to, to target some of those muscle groups probably, for me, would have prevented it from ever happening. And let me tell you, you got a hole in your abdomen and intestines are like draping out of you like a dress. You know, anything you could do to avoid that, I, I think I would highly recommend you might want to consider it. You know, even if it's something as simple as just squeezing your knees together. So you got six of these left. Again, like I said, not the most exhilarating exercise in the world, but you know, it is, it is hitting muscles and it's flexibility and, and it's preventative medicine. One thing I learned with this is sometimes this thing will flip out of your, flip out of your knees. You, you might want to just keep a hand on it when you're doing it too. I've got a year of training on it, so I, I've, I've kind of got the grip in there. But when you first start, sometimes it's popping out of your knees. Okay. And they give you scores and stuff in the game for what that's worth. All right, so next uh, I do something called the back press, where I take this and just put it behind me. I think that this is one of those things that's really helping me with my uh, the tension in my upper neck. So I'm just taking my arms, oh, this is probably the best angle on it, and I'm squeezing it together kind of like that. I feel like this is really kind of working to open up some of those muscles in my neck and I think this is probably some of the most active medicine uh, in terms of uh, preventing those kind of like tension headaches with the, the tense muscles and things in the back of my neck. And um, to, that, to that end I would mention that when I do these again I'm not, not trying to like stretch it to the limit. I'm not trying to get those knuckles together to you know, crush the hell out of this ring, just letting it put some tension into my arms. And you can see my arms kind of like bouncing around a little bit because, you know, I've been exercising them for a little while. The muscles are, you know, they're getting a little strained. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be much. I think there's oftentimes a tendency when you uh, start an exercise, when it doesn't kill you right off the bat, you kind of start feeling like, oh, maybe I got to like, you know, turn this one up to 11. Like for me, the plank that I did earlier, when I first started doing planks, um, I was feeling like, oh, this is there's nothing to this. So I added into the plank kind of like a, a push-up where I'd kind of go into that pyramid shape in the plank and then like extend my arms to, to kind of a push-up to try to uh, add more challenge to it. Um, but then I abandoned that and just started doing regular planks and found out that, you know, if you just kind of do the exercise enough times, it's really going to target the groups that it's aimed at. Okay, and that's the last of those. There's 20 of those. What's after this? I think I might have boat pose after this. My memory serves. Yeah, boat pose. Okay, so boat pose is kind of like doing some crunches. And uh, for you, you wouldn't need the ring at all. This game just uses the ring in order to uh, kind of track your movement. This is that one that I said was kind of like, well, like if you look at the picture on the screen, it's got this little guy, his name's Tip. <laughs> his character in the, name, in the game's named Tip. He's kind of up like this, if you look at kind of the way I am, except he's holding his ring like this. I tell you, for, for a guy that's got most of your weight in your upper body, once I go back, I'm never coming back up into this position again. It's just not going to happen because there's not enough weight in my legs. For, um, for women, I think it's a little easier. But for guys, you know, once you go down, you can pull your legs up. But unless you're going to tuck your, your uh, toes under something, you know, you're never going to get your upper body back up unless you kind of like jerk it up or something. And that's definitely not what you're looking to do here. So I, I just use this. It's kind of crunches. It's getting my whole abdomen and it's targeting those muscles, you know, around my groin, strengthening that stuff up. And this seems like such a nothing exercise, but I tell you, you know, once I've been doing well, everything else you've already seen me doing and I'm doing this, it's a, 
I, I definitely am feeling this. But, by the way, the reason I'm holding the ring weird is so that I can extend my hands past my knees without bumping. Because I, I, I'm doing it in the male posture instead of the female posture. All right, so we're done with that. Uh, I've got two more exercises. One is the bow pull, which is kind of a neat adaptation of this thing, where instead of squishing it, we're pulling it out. Oh, and I gotta stay still. Okay. And just, you're pulling it out kind of like this. And this is uh, getting, you know, a lot of the muscles across your arms, a little bit in your chest, a lot in your back. It's kind of getting um, uh, biceps. When I do this, I'm making sure not the extended arm, the one that's facing out forward, I'm trying not to lock that elbow. So I, I still got some bend in that elbow. If you lock the elbow, then you're going to be taking the, the strain out of the muscles and putting it just into the joint, which you're not looking to do. You want all this tension to just be being held by your, your muscles. So we do these for a little bit. I, um, I am a fan of archery. I've got a bow. I haven't done a lot of archery lately. And, uh, I'm curious as to, after having done this, if I'm going to really feel a difference in how easy it is to draw back that, that bowstring. I presume that it will be a lot easier because, you know, I can feel this. I can feel this in my arms. It's like a steel ring in there. And we're swapping to the other side like this. Give it a little countdown and here we go. I'm making sure I'm not locking up that elbow. And after this, there is just, there's one more exercise left to do. Uh, it's more of like a balance thing. And uh, I feel like this next exercise coming up has really, really improved my, my sense of balance. And I, I, I always had a, a reasonable sense of balance, not like I walk around like a drunk guy or anything. But uh, after having done this exercise, I, I really feel like it's improved my, uh, my nimbleness, my balance, my sense of being able to move around, like in, especially in a construction environment, um, or uh, I've been uh, breaking apart a giant wood pile, you know, chainsawing it up, getting uh, ready to build a woodshed and everything, kind of uh, walking all over the, uh, you know, sometimes slippery, sometimes wobbly logs. I found that uh, having done this exercise, I felt like I was a little bit more mountain goaty than I, I would have been otherwise. All right. So, uh, for this next exercise, it's going to be a little challenging for me. I like to look at the screen to kind of follow along. Uh, this is called tree pose. This is the, the balance one I've been talking about. We take one of your, whoop, it's a little, a little weird doing it when I'm not looking at the screen. So you get one leg up here, try to have it kind of off to the side. You take this, I'm wondering, I've got a microphone up over my head. How's that going to play out? All right. And then you're going to tilt in the direction of the leg. I find this is a lot easier if I kind of find something to to lock onto. You could look at you guys, I guess. So if I find some stationary object and whew, and kind of go back and forth, I think I think I do four of these for either side. And this is doing a nice nice bit of stretching in my side. Is that all of them? No, one more. This is doing a nice bit of stretching in my side, but really, it's really getting my, uh, my balance, uh, my sense of balance uh, improved. Okay, we swap to the other side, just like that. Uh, in the game, they say that you don't have to, uh, you don't have to have the leg up if that's too difficult, but uh, that's like, the, that's my favorite part of this whole thing, is uh, really improving that sense of balance. And having a good sense of balance, again, is a good way of avoiding injuries, and I don't. And by that, I don't. I don't simply mean you know it's like if you if you're unbalanced, you fall over and you hurt yourself. I mean just as you're walking over odd terrain, having kind of an, a really strong innate inner sense of balance can make it so you like you don't like sprain an ankle, twist an ankle, strain an ankle. It's all about the ankles. Is that it? Yeah. All right, and that is my warm-up routine that I do. Every day when I, I start my exercise routine, um, I found it to be an enormous help in my life. Normally, like I said, uh, I would go through this uh, either a second time or I would go into the game a little bit. If you're using this video as a way of, uh, you know, uh, 
doing this kind of exercise in your own life, uh, I would suggest just go back. I'll put the time code on the screen right here where you need to go back to in the video so that you can find uh, you know, where it began again. I would definitely go through the whole thing a second time because what we just did, it got your body kind of warmed up. It got your body flexible and limber. And the next pass, and it kind of started tiring us out a little bit. And the next pass is the one where you're really going to start building up that strength because uh, the whole idea of strength training and... Um, you know, building up that, uh, you know, extra ability to do work is by pushing your body uh, to a point where it's tired and then pushing it just a little bit more. Uh, and then your body adapts by, you know, strengthening up those muscles and, you know, improving that, that uh, flexibility and improving that, uh, that sense of balance. If you don't do that, like, just a little bit more, it's, um, it's kind of like you've warmed your car up. It's like it's a winter. you you got to take your car out for a drive. you got it all warmed up in the driveway. You finally got all the ice off. And then, like, you never actually do your drive. So it's like what we just did is like the warming up, getting your car ready to go. But now, go back to the earlier time code, go through the whole thing again, and that's when you actually get your work accomplished. So I hope that you found this helpful. I know it's been a huge benefit to my life. And even if you're not doing this specific exercise routine, this is a starting point, you know, for people that don't you know, necessarily know where they want to start. Even if you're not doing this specific exercise routine, just doing something, doing something that kind of challenges you. You know, everyone's always talking about the perfect exercise routine, the perfect this, the perfect that. You know, just doing something is so much better than doing nothing that if you're not sure what the perfect thing is, just get out there and do something. This is something, something else you come up with is something, but getting out there and doing something that gets your body uh, you know, warmed up and, uh, you know, uh, tested and strained a little bit and strained I mean in the good way where you're like pushing yourself just a little bit uh, further than you normally would uh, you know whatever you're doing it's going to be better than doing nothing at all so don't worry about whether you're perfect don't worry about whether you know you look like some kind of a huge muscle man I certainly don't just worry about doing the best that you can do and every day try to push that mark just a little bit farther that's it Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.